after this. To there we go. See, now it's being recorded. Thank you, Jonathan. Watch your mouth, Gary. Watch your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I got to put got it. All right. Awesome. Hey, John. John, are you joining us or? No. No, okay. I'm joining you for the meeting or joining the church as a member? Or Either one. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Brock, you know, it's really on my way. Yeah. Um, Crystal? Crystal. Yeah. Uh, the t-shirt wasn't the right size. So okay. Right okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Whoever you. All right. Thank you. All right. Blessings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was uh, John Opkenorth from Words of Hope. Oh. Just, and, so uh, he's going to join our church. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he pre he preached here on Sunday. So, wait a minute. How come Jim's with Gary and it's not a John? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. kind of unusual. I don't still, don't, don't read into it. He's still fine <laughs> over here. Don't read. <laughs> we we actually live five minutes away, and I've got something going on in um, Hudsonville here in the afternoon so i just left john 45 minutes ago and i'm here yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. wonderful all right well i think we should get started and with the group here i just want to open it up uh for some short prayer so let the spirit move pray over our meeting pray over our time um and i'll just close us once when, when i feel like our time is up Sound good? Sounds good. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the Alliance and for the Harvest Network. And Lord, we thank you for the new things that you are doing in our midst. And we ask you to continue to give us wisdom and discernment and uh, to bless each of our congregations, Lord, as we seek to follow Jesus in doing kingdom ministry uh, in a challenging day, in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to lead this meeting, to guide it, and to, uh, to do the things that you want accomplished. And we just look forward to seeing where you lead, and we thank you. Thank you for the growing Harvest Network, Lord. Continue to increase our harvest and multiply our fish and our loaves so that everybody may be satisfied, satisfied with the Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the way you have, you have guided your church in the past. And we ask, O oh Lord, that uh, you would continue to guide that we would be receptive to your guidance. And above all, Lord, we ask that uh, everything we do would be honored and glorify your name and that your kingdom's work would continue in a mighty way. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for each one gathered here, uh, for the churches they represent, for the for your church that they represent in, in the, the bodies of Christ throughout um throughout this area and, and, and beyond, Lord, and we pray uh, for those that can't join us today, too, for uh, the various reasons. Um, just pray that you would bless them, uh, that you would continue to um, guide them in, in, in kingdom ministry, and uh, that you would indeed uh, bring about great harvests in each of our contexts, Lord. Lord, we pray for clarity of mind today. We pray for wisdom, and we pray, we just break any confusion off that whatever is communicated would be clear and there'd be good understanding among all who are listening.
Yes. Lord, we're we're grateful for what is happening in our network, in the Alliance Global. We're excited for many of us to gather in Denver and to see your movement that you started here continue to flourish and uh, multiply. Lord, we just pray for as we have a conversation as a network that your spirit would move every conversation that we would uh, be uh, able to be clear with each other, be able to respond to questions, and that you would lead and guide uh, this meeting today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. I think there's there's 12 of us. So uh, maybe we could just kind of go around the room and just introduce ourselves, just name and where you are from. I will do it according to how you're listed here on my screen because I know it's different for every screen. Uh, so I'm going to start with Jonathan. If you would uh, introduce yourself in church and maybe role within the Harvest Network. Yeah. Uh, so John uh, Vanderwall, I'm the lead pastor at Hopkins Community Church, and um, yeah, I a uh, role. I don't know what my role is really. We're working with. Uh, doing a lot of, I guess I'm kind of the external communications guy for the network. Uh, if you're hearing things, you're probably hearing them. Well, you might be hearing them from me at least. I, uh, if I'm doing my job, then who is? And um, right now, kind of also working along uh, with the Covenant Keepers team, trying to develop that. And um, we'll talk more about that, I guess, in a little bit. But um, yeah, that's that's me. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm Gary Jarvis. I'm the pastor at South Blendon Community Church in the Hudsonville area, uh, Blendon Township. I'm also on the Harvest staff with Jonathan, Jim, and the Clausens. Um, and my role basically is to kind of convene that team, lead that team, um, and so forth. I'm also helping to form the board, which we'll talk about later, the Barnabas team, and the ordination oversight team. I'm Jim Harrison, and um, I'm serving with John in the Hopkins Community Church. Um, I'm, I actually serve half time uh, as their pastor of prayer and discipleship, and um, and I'm also serving as one of the leaders of the Harvest Network. Um, my primary role right now is to lead prayer efforts. All right, Clausens. I'm Todd Clausen, a member of Overacial Reform Church, um, and we're part of the staff uh, on the Harvest Network also. Part of the APES, I'm probably part of the prophetic side. Um, we'll be working with Jonathan and the Covenant Keepers, and also we're involved with the prayer meeting. And I'm Carrie, and what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie. I don't know why on my side, you're coming out stronger, your voice, than Todd. Oh. So I don't I don't know what where the mic is. Where the mic is. Maybe. So just letting you know. Okay. All right. Uh Catherine. Hi. Um I'm part of the West Copake Reform Church in upstate New York. I'm vice president of Coast History, and we're in the process of transitioning. Um, out of the RCA. Yeah, the thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, Jake Moss. I'm Jake Moss, and I'm representing the Hub of Churches in Kentucky. Oh, very good. All right. Good to meet you. Wonderful. Yeah. Jim, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I know. I know. <laughs> it's great to see you again. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, Mike Pitzenberger. Yeah, uh, I've been at Over Eisel Reformed Church for about two years with uh, the Clausens, and I'm excited to be part of the Harvest Network and the Alliance, and I'm currently uh, working with the Barnabas team and coaching, as well as a new member of the Covenant Keepers with Jonathan. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Warren Siebert. I'm from the West Copake Reformed Church. Uh, we are transitioning. I uh, work for Jesus and Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <Praise laughs> <God>. <laughs> All 
All right. Felipe. Or did, Felipe, is it Felipe or Felipe? How do I? Wait. Felipe, Felipe. <laughs> All right, Felipe. All right, very good. Very good. And you got your you wife. Got your... Yeah, yes. My name is Felipe Rios and my wife Stella. I'm right now the, the church planting in Indianapolis, Indiana. Blessing for everybody. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. All right, Mike Drew. Uh, Mike Drew, pastor at Haven for the last uh, three and a half years, Haven in Hamilton, Michigan. Um, serving part of the Barnabas team, coach, and um, if we could add one small detail to our meeting today, I'd love to talk about campus ministries with those who are around here. I have a note. I actually have a note right here based on your email, so yeah. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Good. All right, Jim uh, Bussis, is that the... That, that is correct, uh, Bussis. Um, I'm an elder at uh, Overeisel Reformed Church and uh, here to represent uh, the consistory as if Mike and Todd and Carrie can't uh, pull that off by themselves, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. And Mr. Bovey. He, uh, he might not be here yet. He had a... Um... He he messaged me and said he has a meeting. He had a meeting at one, and he'd be back as soon as he could. So okay, uh, could you introduce him for us? I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> all right. Is so it Tim? I would try. Is, is it Tim Booby? I uh, it just says T Booby to me. I I don't oh. have any other info apart from that. So we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> right, does anybody know him? Well, if it's uh, Tim Bovey, he's from our congregation, one of our elders. Yes. Oh, nice. All right. We'll go with that for now <laughs> until he corrects us. Uh, Jeff Elzinga. Yeah, so I, I apologize the camera is not working on my Chromebook. I am the pastor and actually the original church planter 16 years ago of Life Tree Community Church. And I have our head elder with me, Herm Tannis. I, okay. I don't really have an active role at the moment. Uh, but I'm kind of enjoying that temporarily because I was overly active in the RC Holland classes on way too many committees all the time. <laughs> yeah. I think we can all resonate with that mm -hmm. at certain points in our ministry. So, and Jeff, where is that church? So it, it's the address is West Olive. If you ever heard of M45 or Lake Michigan Drive, we're yes. halfway between Allendale and Lake Michigan, literally in the middle of nowhere. I can picture it. <laughs> but, it there's a, but there's a great mission field because there's a lot of people in this rural area that do not go to church. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise God. Glad to have you. All right. Just, well, just, just, so, just so all you yep. folks know, Catherine doesn't like us to use the term in the middle of nowhere for any church in the kingdom of God. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I also like the the, the reference to um, let's see, my boss is Jesus. I think Warren said that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Catherine, don't forget Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Praise God. Wonderful. All right. So wanted to just kick off a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've all gotten the notification that Dan Ackerman is transitioning out of his role. Um, uh, with Art Global, and wanted to just see if anybody had any questions, if anybody needed to process that a little bit. I don't think it's unexpected, is it, Gary? Um, I mean, I overall, yeah, I overall, I mean, I think the idea was when they were planting the alliance, uh, the reason they had the two staff, him and Tim Vink, was just the need. But there was always a plan at some point to go to one uh, executive um, who worked with the board more heavily. Um, and so the, that was part of the discussion, as my understanding was, now is the timing to move in that direction. And, and just to say, so that doesn't, uh, right, just so that there's some clarity, my understanding is that does not put Tim in that executive 
role um, at the moment. They're actually going to bring in a um, a transitional executive. Uh, that's Dirk Will Dwyer from um, Jamestown Reformed Church in Michigan. He does transitional leadership as a job with uh, school districts. Um, and so, and he doesn't want a full-time permanent position. So it truly is transitional. And uh, one of the things that Joel Barr said in a meeting is that Tim's free to apply for that position. Um, but there is going to be a transitional time. My first reaction to that email um, was a, a bit of, uh, am I getting the truth mm -hmm. as to why this happened? Um, but I quickly realized and remembered, that's right, I'm not in the RCA anymore. I'm in a new thing. And I need to uh, I need to allow the new thing to be the new way. Yeah. And trust that um, what is being spoken uh, is exactly what is meant. And so, if any of you are in that same place, I would just encourage you to take it for what it was and what was said, and uh, let's uh, let's bless Dan on his way and 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 continue to move on. So, it was. A Holy Spirit movement of, or in that moment, I think, just to remember. So uh, that that piece of trust is certainly so necessary in our fledgling organization. Yeah, uh, I'm taking all parties at their word that what you saw in the letter is is um, is is the truth. That's what. The transition is all about. So, all right. Any other thoughts or questions? Thank you for that, Mike. Just to uh, give a little credence to Dirk's uh, role, um, he was our used to call them moderators <laughs> prior to Mike's coming on board at Overisol. And uh, we really appreciated his leadership through that whole process. Nice. Yeah. Praise God. I see Jim Point joined us. Jim, are you there? Yep. All right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we, I was going to ask you to turn the camera on because we're recording this. It's very important. <laughs> see your face. Anyway, uh, Jim. Uh, we've already done introductions. We're talking about uh, Dan's transition a little bit, but introduce yourself if you would. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I'm uh, I'm the uh, preaching pastor at Auto Reform Church. Um, uh, moved here, in Michigan, about four years ago. I served churches in uh, New Jersey and Michigan and uh, California and Arizona, and now back in Michigan. Wonderful. All right. And I'm not hearing much else uh, to talk about in terms of Dan's transition. So just pipe in if, if I'm going to move too fast here to the next item that we wanted to update you on. Uh, what I would like to do is talk a little bit. This is an invitation uh, to you all. One of the things, the reasons we wanted to do this Zoom call was we had recognized we did our launch back in February, and there was a lot of things that uh, we were doing. There was a lot of movement. And some of that movement were like, I don't know if our churches know all the things that are happening uh, in and for our network. And we need to circle back and let people know what's going on. Uh, our network, by the way, is now officially 12 churches. Am I right, Jonathan? Yep. Um, and I know that there's some other churches that are still looking. They still are working on, I think we have a list of uh, up, you know, high 20s, I think, that we're reaching out to. Um, and so some of those churches are deciding between networks. Some of those are in transition and they haven't been released yet. Some of them have said, hey, we're going to join the network. But right now, officially, we're 12. So a number of churches, I think, 
unless other networks have uh, new information. I think we're the second largest network in, <laughs> in terms of number of churches. Uh, maybe not in terms of, uh, somebody pointed out, in terms of um, members, membership, but, um, but with that, uh, we're coming, with the ARC, we're coming to a stage where the initial board of ARC Global is having some turnover just because of term limits, right? So they're asking networks like ours, since we're the second largest in number of churches, to, um, to nominate someone to be on their board. Uh, and the first people to start uh, July is my understanding. And so I wanna invite you to do just that, nominate people that uh, from it within our network, let us know. And I could say, you could put it in the chat here in the meeting. If a name pops in your head, uh, send it over to Jonathan uh, that he might collect those names um, that we could review, reach out to those people and see if they're interested in um, accepting that nomination uh, to be on the ARC Global uh, board. So they're asking us at this stage uh, to start filling uh, that board. Um, it's a, it's actually a little newer than what we thought. We thought that we would have a little more um, uh, time as a network, but uh, but that's okay. That's part of uh, what we're doing. It, you know, we're all experiencing some of that. The building the bridge as we're or walk, going over the bridge as we are building it, uh, feeling there. So let us know if there's anybody that you feel would be a strong candidate for the network. Yeah. Are there qualifications within the church? Um, not, not that I know of in terms of like, Everyone that was on the board before, I'm sure, was an elder, a deacon, or a pastor of a church at some point currently. So I don't have, that. they've never given me like, uh, here's a, the exact job description, but I would say nominate people that you feel are, um, you know, you would put on your own consistory. Spiritually mature. Spiritually mature, Yeah. Um, to use biblical language, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. There you go, Acts. Yeah. <laughs> Thing of knowledgeable in God's word. But in terms of like a requirement that they be a pastor, an ordained pastor, not not the case. Yeah. I know the current board has elders on it. They have a missionary on it. Um, a couple of pastors. I think most of them, though, are elders. There's more elders than than pastors on the current board. All right, be thinking about that, praying about that. I'll circle back at the end of the meeting just to remind you of that. Um, uh, the next thing I want to do is to do some team updates, let you know what each team has been working on. And the first team I want to let you know about is our board. So we, at our launch, uh, we had communicated, we don't have a board yet. So that's like task number one is to form a board. And so that board has been formed uh, and they've met once. We the the individuals on our board is um, Jeff Snay from Over Isol Reformed Church. He's an elder there. Glenn Emmert from Ottawa Reformed Church, an elder there. Uh, Mike Van Buren, uh, Jim's cohort at Ottawa Reformed, um, uh, one of the pastors there. And then I'm convening that team as well. So we got a board of four. And uh, we want our board to be anywhere between three to six. Um, and so nominations are welcome for that as well. So we've met once. Uh, and for every meeting that we have, we want to get to know each other first. 
So we spent most of the time just getting to know each other as individuals. And then we uh, set off on one task. Um, so that task is to write up our bylaws. Right now, Mike Van Buren has got the job of drafting our first draft. We're meeting again in early July to look at that draft um, and to make some edits and then to send that out to you all uh, to say, hey, do these bylaws look like who we want to be? So that's what's happening on the board side. Uh, any questions about the board? Is there anything, Gary, about uh, term length, frequency of meeting? Is it circumstantial or is it, you know, built into the calendar, rhythms? What do you, what's the discussion? So the discussion right now is that, um, you know, the board is a is a is an initial board. So the team that we have doesn't have term limits until we define them in the bylaws. So that is what's being worked on as we're developing those bylaws. We haven't landed on anything yet, if that makes sense. But we are, you know, the model we're working on is a governance model. The idea of the board being that team that sets the playing field, tells us what's in bounds, out of bounds, uh, what are the rules of the game, so to speak. We're going to rely heavily on scripture for that, and then to empower the staff and the teams uh, to have freedom and empowerment to basically play the game, to live out the mission within those boundaries. So that's the basic idea. Gary, question for you. Uh, you said that you're working on the bylaws and then you're going to be sending them out. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to approval of these types of things, since there are no bylaws yet, it's, I'm, I'm yeah. sure we, you know, we, we still don't know how that's going to work out. So who gets approval? Is it going to be each church member church gets one? Is it going to be an elder? Is there going to be a delegate? You know, I'm still thinking classes, right? Yep. You know, so, so how do, you know, who gets to? you know, decide these types of things. Um, yeah, going yeah. That, my sense at this point is it's going to be uh, more consensus uh, building than it is like voting, really, uh, because it's brand new. So if I look at some of our other networks that have started, you've got the Dakota network. They basically took their classes bylaws and just transferred them over. Um, and as I read those, I'm like, this looks like a classus, right? You look at the Michigan Catalyst Network, they didn't have any churches when they wrote their bylaws. And so even in their bylaws, it says there are no members per se to our network. So they didn't, they didn't build into their system that voting system. So that's part of what we're trying to decide as we build the bylaws. So my sense is, with these bylaws, there's not gonna be like a voting, but we do wanna hear your feedback to say, yes, this is what we wanna be. We think these bylaws, the way that they operate, fit best the, the mission, vision, and values of the Harvest Network. And that's gonna work for us. So I don't envision a voting, you know, delegates, things like that at this stage. At the same time, I want we want to hear your input. We don't want to just say, "Here's the bylaws." I mean, bylaws can be changed over time, but you know we've got to. Um, we do want to get your input on that. I'm I'm thinking it through, but it, it also does then sound like the board has a lot of authority. Yeah, could be. Yeah. And, and and at this stage in the game, absolutely, I would say that's the case. Um, but as we develop our bylaws, too, that's where the authority gets defined, right? Those um, those sideboards, the rules of the game, so to speak. Right. I don't want to get fixated on this, but it also then yeah. sounds like if, if, if you're just going to ask for the advice and consent, so to speak, but not the vote 
towards the bylaws, ultimately it's going to be the board's going to be deciding what is the consensus of the network in order to institute the bylaws. Exactly. Right. That I would, and I'm going to say that's initially, right? So uh, as we're developing bylaws, like let's just take these two examples. You've got the Dakota classes. They have in their bylaws an annual meeting where they vote for changes on the mm -hmm. bylaws. They have member churches and things like that. So uh, that could be when we send out our bylaws, that could be like, yeah, we want to go that direction. And then initially, right, the board is the one that says, okay, this is what we heard from our churches. This is the direction we're going. Um, uh, and then they build in the bylaws, then, okay, we're going to have an annual meeting where we vote on things. We have member churches. The other direction is the Michigan Catalyst, where the board does have that authority ongoing. They've built that into their bylaws. Okay. Say I'm, initially, I'm just going for clarification. That's yeah. all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm saying, it's, so initially, you're right. Um, and we're also operating under the ARC Globals uh, board as well. Yeah, at this point, there's kind of a transition there. So my input would be yep. um, having helped with bylaws on a variety of organizations, churches, less is better. And yeah. I know Mike, you're doing very well, so I, I trust they'll be drafted actually very well, but yep. as guardrails go, yeah, you know, I've seen organizations put a few too many guardrails early on. Yeah. And the fewer the better in a way because it's easy to add them as clarity develops going forward. So that's yes. my only input. Maybe maybe Jim, who's on the call, could you know put that bug in Mike's ear too that just <laughs> my humble input would be, yeah, you know, less is better, but I agree the framework is necessary. Right, right. Good, good input. Note taken. All right. I think it would be fair to say, too, that um, uh, many of our congregations and many of our leaders are um, still sort of in reaction to, uh, to the church that we left. And some of the, uh, I would say, heavy-handed politics that sometimes we're at the class east level. Uh, so it's it's really we're we're trying a new wineskin, mm -hmm. and we're we're not trying to just transfer what we know, but we we're making an effort um, intentionally um, to be more biblically driven and less legalistic, mm -hmm. um, according to the BCO. Yep. I think that's fair to say. I think it's also important. I mean, we're, we're as we try this new thing, right? Um, it's important for us to, I think as Mike, as Mike Drew said just a, a few minutes ago, you know, seeing somebody step down and going, oh, are we getting the whole story here? You know, like it, it's, even, even I think for me, I hated classes. I, I've been in three different classes over the course of my ministry time um, as, as a pastor and other, you know, and, and other various roles too. And it's like, I, I just despised it because you didn't ever feel like they were, it, it seemed to exist for itself in a lot of ways, but to, yeah. to trust in the initial stages of this, as we try to figure this out and, and stuff. And, and really the vision of this network is about, empowering churches and so we're not it's about empowering and equipping it's not about voting and you know mm -hmm. uh creating uh overtures and and all of the the stuff <laughs> all of the stuff so um yeah yeah and and i mean my at least in in the, my initial brainstorming of this i uh of the of the network in general was mm -hmm. like full transparency we're going to send you out the draft and we're going to you know like you're going to get the whole the whole bit it's it's better that way you know if we can be transparent mm -hmm. it's it it just creates the atmosphere of trust and accountability that way so 
Wonderful. Yeah, the goal is really equip and empower. Yep. Yes, absolutely. All right. Let's, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about our staff team, what we've been working on since the launch. Our launch team has met quite a few times. I can't even remember on my hand how many times we've met. And the things we've been working on is that formation stuff, right? Figuring out our roles, what teams we're going to work on building. Uh, so uh, that's Jonathan, myself, Jim, uh, Harry, and Todd Clausen. We also have uh, been putting in some financial components to this. Not Nothing like major or complicated, but we did hire a firm to do our accounting and uh, help us pay the bills and stuff like that. Uh, that is DeBoer, Goodike, uh, Holler, and Tuttle. They're a firm here in Hudsonville. And um, so we're pretty pleased about that. Um, we set in our last meeting three goals with that end um, in mind that Jonathan was talking about, really equipping churches. So three goals. One is to do uh, some events, some equipping events um, uh, or gatherings. It's maybe a better term for it. Uh, one around healing ministry. Uh, one around um, uh, the uh, training in coaching, Barnabas coaching. Uh, and then third is if there's a church that's doing a workshop that they can invite the other churches to. So that one's going to bubble up from the Holy Spirit. So that's goal one, is to begin some of that equipping of our churches. The second is, and that's this is kind of the start of it, but we got to build on this, is a communication methodology. How do we, uh, how do we communicate? How do we stay in relationship together ongoing as a network? And then uh, the, the third goal is really just to keep working at building our teams, um, making sure they're functional, um, uh, you, know, you know, by the end of this year. And we're already on a good path for that. Um, so, yeah, so that's what the staff's been working on. Any questions, concerns there? All right, I'm not, not hearing any at this point. Uh, share with you the prayer team, Jim and Clausens. What are the what's the prayer team been up to? Well, we we have been meeting. There's been typically a group of of eight to ten regular uh, intercessors, uh, which have included Todd and and Carrie and one of their sons, Jesse, and uh, uh, Mike Pitzenberger has been a big part of that. Uh, and, and Gina, when she is able, and my wife Beth is a part of that. And I would say that uh, that's exciting because we've really been meeting for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were meeting well before the launch, and we've been meeting twice, about every other week, twice a month, um, on Wednesday nights. And <clears throat> we've chosen to do it at Overrisal because it's the most centrally located of what we saw is the emerging harvest network and that's been a good a great location the hospitality has been very good and we've appreciated being able to gather at 6 45 and we always go to at least eight uh, <laughs> we have sometimes gone to 8 30 uh, probably the highlight is is that we always spend time seeking the Lord's heart by starting with listening prayer. Uh, what does the Holy Spirit want us to pray for for our Alliance churches at this time? And um, we believe in sort of apest uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers or shepherds and teachers, where where each of us use our giftings. Uh, even in the intercessory process, we be, we believe with all of our hearts that everything the Lord's going to do is birthed by prayer. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. um, it's been it's been an exciting time of, of prayer. Uh, I myself am part of the the Global Alliance, uh, what we call Shaking House prayer team, and that's in every uh, Friday morning by Zoom because we are located all over the place. And, uh, and there's typically 10 or 12 intercessors, and, and Tim Vink leads that. Uh, and that's been terrific. To, to be honest with you, I've learned to pray in new and more effective ways through the Shaking House prayer team. And, and, um, and I believe that uh, we're also praying in wonderful ways. And maybe Carrie and and Todd, you might add, or or Mike, because you're a regular part of that. Well, this truly spirit-filled prayer. This is probably I've been part of a lot of prayer groups in my life, and this has just been phenomenal to see how the spirit has moved, and um, it's just been a real blessing. Um, Gary has joined us several times too. You've been part of it also, Gary. And yep. Yes, Gary. Very neat. And I would like to just open it up for everyone. I mean. Um, if you can't make it every time, I mean, just experience it. Mike, I think you've been involved in it a few times also, right? Mike Drew? Yeah, yeah. It's very meaningful. And, and it makes me think, Gary, you know, we receive monthly uh, updates from the Alliance. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can down the road have some sort of communication within the harvest network in a similar fashion that we could get to our congregants? And part of that is letting them know what's going on. And another yep. part of that is inviting them to our time of prayer so that the area churches anyway who can make it, uh, members, elders, deacons, people can come. Or maybe we can birth it, the Holy Spirit could birth it in a couple of different places as well who knows but yeah it's, it's i think i think it's the groundwork of the future it's interesting that in our last staff meeting we were actually talking about this right mm -hmm. so thank you for bringing that out yeah one thing in our last staff meeting too we're we're, we're trying to figure out how to network testimonies and sharing right mm -hmm. we can get different churches to somehow we can network um what God's doing when there's miracles, the neat things where we can just share these things on a somewhere through a, a media base that we can all be connected just to encourage all of us in the Lord, right? To see what He's doing, sharing God sightings. Yep, mm -hmm. praise God. And in the future, yep. in the future, the vision that we have as a prayer team is that uh, we will eventually move around and visit other congregations mm -hmm. and pray for their leaders. Uh, but obviously you have to start somewhere. And we've been waiting for even these churches to come on formally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jim, you're, you're, Jim, you're welcome upstate New York anytime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. So, some of these might have to yeah. be done by Zoom, right? <laughs> I would say that would be one of your first goals, in my opinion, because we're gathering people from across the country into this network. Um, you know, for us at Haven, we're we're a stone's throw from over ISIL. So uh, we could come up there anytime, although our prayer time is every Wednesday and uh, it runs at the same time. So that's been our struggle um, to get there. But um, mm -hmm. for folks and uh, I believe what on the call here, New York, Tennessee, so on. Um, I think we have to be conscious of of our technology usage and and get people involved in those ways, even in a prayer session. We do all of our prayer meetings here at Haven over Zoom, and um, the only thing we found difficult is sometimes somebody will end the prayer meeting with a doxology, and we are not good singers over Zoom because it all depends <laughs> on your it all depends on your bandwidth right. <laughs> how quickly you come through. So hmm. I, I would encourage you to uh, to be able to utilize um, whatever over ISIL's tools are there to get Zoom meetings and uh, or Zoom participants and 
if you got a big screen TV, uh, that works pretty pretty well. And then just uh, make sure you leave space in your prayer time for them to respond because it always lags a little bit. It's good. Good recommendation. Yeah, good ideas. Right. There's some good technology. Big, Sorry. I was going to just say a big thing that um, I have found is praying with each other. We have just really um, learned so much about each other and um, grown already in, you know, just this year time that we've been meeting and um, we're comfortable in enough now that when people have issues and problems that they're just really struggling with in their congregations or whatever, um, just praying around them. It's been just amazing the things that come up spiritually um, that we can help alleviate issues and um, just the, the amount of encouragement and love that we can pour on one another has just been amazing. Amen. So good. And uh, there are times, uh, like in, in one of our meetings, um, Gary shared uh, a challenge that was going on, and, and we ended up taking another 20 minutes and just focusing on, on Gary, and we saw breakthroughs. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good prayer time. <laughs> it was good results too. Good fruit after that. Absolutely. So, my church. Sandra Nichols came from Conklin, and uh, she also shared very transparently some of the challenges uh, that she's going through. And we were able to pray over her and, and, and for her, and that was a, a, a great time. Mm -hmm. Hoping that um, that clusters will form where where um, alliance churches as they gather as they they come in to the harvest network if there's a group of three congregations that are close by that they can decide in a common location and and begin prayer ministry um, much of what we're doing now mm -hmm. in a similar fashion and i i believe that when you when you gather prayer champions it's not hard to multiply this other places. So I think the key is identifying intercessors in your own congregation, people that are that really champion the importance of prayer and who are prayers. You gather them together and and uh, it's a powerful force spiritually. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm hearing kind of a monthly just update like a blog or something that goes out to folks um, doing some Zoom prayer times and then clusters of prayer times to build those relationships and, and, and so forth. Yeah. And I think it's going to be important, Gary, to, yep. to keep the Harvest congregations in touch with one another. Yep. To celebrate together. What can we pray for? Um, eliminating, you know, as we've talked about before, the sense of competition and all those dynamics that yes, get entrenched yeah. in denominational life. Um, see ourselves as part of the kingdom movement. Mm -hmm. And I think the more Please we communicate go. to that end, the more people will catch that and it'll be part of the ethos of who we are. Mm. I wonder yeah. if it would it be possible to have a Facebook. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, group, I think is what it's called. Not, sure. not a page, but a group. You're just thinking that, like, for instance, where we live, there's uh, Allendale Informed or Robinson Informed or Grand Haven Informed, mm -hmm. different groups and or pages where it's kind of a finger on the pulse. Just wondering if that's relevant here or useful here. I, I Yeah, I can set that up. I also, I'm... I just created within my like YouTube a like a Harvest Network meeting thing too. So if like for this meeting we can we can start creating things mm -hmm. there. So that oh nice a yeah. channel yeah yeah like, you know, and then um, yeah like a a monthly whether it's a blog or an email or something like that. Um, we are going to we talked about uh, talking with somebody about creating some form of a website. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever that might look like too, just as a, a sort of central location for um, communication and links and, and whatever else resourcing in the whole bit. So 
This, this is very encouraging. I'm just, this is the Holy Spirit moving because these were exactly the discussions we had at our last uh -huh. meeting. Yep. Exactly the same yeah. And I think the Lord is really confirming it right now that we need to get on. Praise God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for it's confirming. Yeah, it is. Very yes. It's really kind of the essence of what we want to be about. So that's good. I want to continue on, talk about um, the Barnabas team. Uh, so the Barnabas team that uh, did the first kind of network event after our launch, we did a coach lab. And I think I'm just going to just going to right now say we need to we're going to have coach be kind of back burner as a term and more Barnabas. And you'll see why when I get to the ordination team update. Uh, anyway, we gathered, when was that? That was in March, April, I don't remember. Uh, and 15 people came to a coach lab, saw a demonstration of coaching, um, got a little bit of teaching on coaching, what it was. We had a lunch together. It was a great time together, got lots of good feedback. And then uh, we gave out a couple of key resources, books, to send them off into triads to coach each other and learn in a triad setting so that there's some practice in being a Barnabas with each other. That is to help build relationships, but also to empower each other in, in, the, in our individual ministries. We want those triads to go for a while. And then in the fall, uh, our Barnabas team is meeting next week to begin planning a deeper dive training so that we've got a team of Barnabases that can come alongside pastors and uh, churches to, um, uh, to support and empower those churches and whatever their mission is relationally. Uh, so those are kind of the things that the Barnabas team is doing. Um, any questions on that? I know that there are a few triads that have formed, so excited about seeing the fruit of that. I'll have to catch up with you, Gary, on that. I had to leave that meeting early, and uh, I'm not sure if I was put in a triad. I'm supposed to lead a triad, so we'll have to talk later. Yeah, well... That, that is in our Barnabas team is to see what triads have formed and how we might be able to help people with that. So, yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, ordination oversight. So let me share a little bit about that as well. Our, over, uh, our ordination oversight team is myself, Felipe, who's on the call here, uh, Rick Christie, and Sandra Nichols. Nichols, thank you. And our first meeting was a meeting with the Foundry GR and the Michigan Catalysts ordination team. The Foundry GR is, they're founded here in GR, it's in Grand Rapids. Um, and they're, what they are doing is a uh, leader, church leadership formation uh, in the local church. So these are a couple of folks that come out of uh, Kuiper College, and we're really seeing that the, the traditional brick and mortar go to their school, uh, get, um, you know, Bible school or seminary training. So take people out of the context of ministry, teach them in an academic setting, and then send them back. Wasn't really working. So what they wanted to do, not to say it doesn't work at all, but uh, what they have founded is uh, an organization that does uh, leadership formation in the local church. So both us and the Michigan Catalyst have been having conversations with them as being a resource for ordination formation. They also do other things for already ordained pastors. They have um, networks for them. They also um, will do elder and deacon training in the local church. Um, and so in those conversations, uh, 
um, Foundry GR is going to start a cohort uh, uh, on uh, in August. August 29 is the first class of their cohort at Community Reformed in Zealand. Zealand already has eight students ready to go. I have in my congregation a student ready to go. And um, I want to invite you, if you've got um, candidates for ordination, or you just want to, if you know people that just want to grow in, um, in their own formation, spiritual formation, to consider the foundry, they are doing um, at Community Reformed a information meeting on June 28th at 10.30 a.m. at Community Reformed. I believe they're going to uh, live stream it and record it. If you can't be there in person and want to know more, we can send that out to you. Um, but uh, pretty exciting because it's, again, it's going to be much more of a hands-on model of, of learning where there is some classwork, but it's shaped around people that are already doing ministry. So instead of having five books you got to read in a semester, it's usually two. They've narrowed it down to that. They, right. <laughs> they, and everything is driven towards like, how, how are you living this out in your ministry? How are you practicing this in your ministry? So it's intended to go hand in hand uh, with people that are already doing ministry. They, the foundry also, you may notice that our global has released their ordination process and it's called pathways. So if you go to arc21.org. Um, Not that, sorry. Hey, there's our Facebook group. Uh, Jeff. Asking you shall receive. Asking you shall receive. Awesome. <laughs> no, that was quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, um, the ordination pathways is out there. So if you have a candidate that wants to be ordained, that's the process they go through. And to get ordained on what they call level one, there's 36 competencies that they need to demonstrate. The foundry has, and then there's 144 after that to encourage ongoing learning. Uh, the foundry has mapped their program to 55 of those competencies. So the foundry is a good resource uh, to move towards ordination. So I want to encourage you uh, pastors to bring um, candidates that you're considering that this would be a good fit. At least come to the information meeting on uh, June 28th or you know, we'll send it out to you. Uh, let us know if you want that information. The important thing is, is that as of June 1st, that information is now public and you right. can go onto the website of the Alliance, the Global Alliance, yep. and, um, and, and find that information and learn more about it. So a quick question, that sounds, that sounds a lot like what um, Coram Deo in Holland does which we've used them a lot over the last like decade, is that, is it, do, um, how do I ask this question? Do we as ARC churches still have the flexibility of where we have people for ministry trained like Coram Deo or yep. is it, okay. Coram Deo is yeah. actually one of the contributing groups to the whole pathways thing from what I Yeah, remember. they're a partner. The key there, Jeff, is the competencies. So wherever they're getting trained, if they if in that training they get the competencies in the pathways. So like ARC doesn't care how you get the competencies to be ordained. Or who gives them. Or who sense. gives them, but that you have those competencies, right? Um, so that gives the flexibility, Jeff. Um, and you, even in those uh, competencies, they give you, like if you're not going to a, an accredited institution. Here are some activities you can do in your local church, in ministry, in order to accomplish that competency. So it could even be at a local level where people are formed. Does that make sense? 
It, it does. That's very helpful, actually. And, and I'll check the pathways. I hadn't read up on that on the website of ARC yet. And I just know Corum Deo, we've actually also supported for a number of years. Just wanted to make sure we were um, still doing the right thing using them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. What would be helpful? Okay, so let me just tell you this. The ordination formation team we've met since we've had these two meetings around these two topics we've met since, and we're trying to organize ourselves to walk with um, ordination candidates. And there's two components. At the local church, you have what's a mentor. So that's somebody at the local church that's walking with a candidate. At the network level, they're called coaches. Okay, so that's why we're moving to Barnabas on that side, So because there are two different types of coaches. But a coach from the network that follows the ordination pathway with a candidate. And then at the global level, uh, there's another person that follows them as well. So at all levels, you're walking with them. Um, and the first thing that a candidate does is they apply to become ordained. Just like those of us that transferred our ordination, it's the same documents you apply. Once you've applied, then they send you a link to the maximum credit form. The idea is you fill out that form to see what competencies you already have. So you don't have to work on those competencies. Uh, you just work on the ones that you haven't yet. Um, so, so, Jeff, if you've got people that you've trained in, uh, I, I forget the name of the the network, if they take that maximum credit form and they're putting in their evidence of competencies that they've gained through that formation process, then that counts for them. Does that make sense? And then that's yes. a that's a good sign of okay, is this a good is this a good um, resource for for our candidates? Are they hitting the competencies that we're looking for? Yeah, perfect. And and Quorum Deo, having a, I have a lot of experience with them. They've actually done a very good job, in my opinion, with a number of people that we've worked with. Again, now this is more of my pre-ARC days under the AR under the RCA chairing committees that train candidates. But yeah, so that that makes a lot of sense. That's good. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful, Jonathan. I saw your hand raised. Oh, I was just going to say the, the See, maximum credit form takes about an hour to fill out. Yep. It, you know, in my experience. <laughs> all right, Jake, what, what's your question? Are you going to also have a preaching elder um, um, pathway? Yeah, preaching elders uh, can definitely go through the, the pathway. So an example, so this is what is going to happen in our church. I've already reached out. I'm already an ARC ordained pastor, and I'm going to do the maximum credit form just to see what competencies I'm missing, right? To see where I'm at as a baseline. And then I have an elder who has been preaching for us quite a bit. He's growing as a preacher and wants to become ordained. I would suggest to you the 36 competencies would probably be the same as for a preaching elder, you know, in the RCA. So um, I would suggest that would be a good process for preaching elders to go through the pathway as well to get the training that they need. Uh, um, I, would, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, just tell you that I'm on the, I'm on the global ARC committee that's overseeing all that. So Gary, you, you have a great explanation. I'm sitting there going, wow. <laughs> you 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 have that down pat and and i'm thinking better than that i think we have on the committee we were actually trying to put it all together and i'm like we're we're, we're slowly getting there but we're getting there so anyways great right. explanation gary thank you jim yeah. appreciate it <laughs> by the way uh so this doesn't also negate if somebody wants to go to western right jim you're tied in with western and right. you're doing some work with them that might be a way for people to get their the competencies, but it's not the only way, right? So, right. So that's any other questions. That's what the ordination oversight team 
has been working on. Now that the pathways are released, it it's really for our team. It's like, okay, just like Jim said, we've got to kind of figure it out, figure out roles. And if there's any candidates that are applying, then we're looking for coaches to come alongside those candidates to be able to walk through that process with them. Yeah, Felipe. Um, Pastor, I got a question for the for the program for the founder. For the 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 next work is is pay the 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 finances for the this the the credit the course. Uh, the next work is pay for the students or any any church send the leader and any church is got them. The, the the compromise for paying the, the the program good good question so we looked into with the foundry if the michigan catalyst and the harvest network would go in together to just pay for to be billed at the network level and then the network might build the churches or might build the actual candidate and work that out um, it came out to about $50,000 um, a year for 24 students. And both networks were like, we're not there at that capacity. So to build to that capacity, the way it's going to work is the foundry, if a church is sending a candidate, then the foundry will build the church. And then the church will work out with the candidate, how much does the church pay? Or the church might ask the network, hey, could you help us with this? Um, but it, the billing goes to the church, and then the church works with the candidate, how much they're going to pay, how much the church is going to pay, how they're going to finance that, if that makes sense. Once we get to a certain level of candidacy, then we can do a network contract where then the billing goes to the network and then the network works with the churches on how to fund that. Does that make sense? Um, so, so hopefully that gives clarity to you, Felipe, Felipe, on how that works. That makes sense. Um, now, right now for the August 29 class cohort that's starting. Yes. We're looking at 15 students. We have nine already. We're looking at 15 students to make it, you know, financially feasible for the foundry. Okay. Um, the the other point, I don't know if you remember in the meeting, the situation, for example, um, okay, right now my church is is beginning. I right now I know got no no got the leader for send this. But yeah. my other my other big question is for the other leaders, Hispanic leaders coming. Yep. Program the program is only in English. Um, yeah. I am I need a, maybe talk to you later. The possibility for the for example the other leaders is got the expectation for for coming the alliance for coming the next world Hispanic leaders. And is is the is need the finish the education? Uh, I I I don't know. Maybe in the future, I don't know. Long long time. I don't know. The the trans the, the this this course is necessary transfers for Hispanic material. Yes. And, yes. and, and teacher in Hispanic and Hispanic um, material. Why? For the this is the situation long time ago in the in the RCA. Many leaders, Hispanic leaders, is not got the options for the go for, for a student the theology or leadership or or any program for development and, and the theology is not possible going for for Western, for the Western is very expensive. And yeah. Is the other problem that Western is no got a Spanish programs. It's some sometimes sometimes got a, a little programs, but it's no it's not sufficient for the formation, the leaders, and for the ordination. 
Right. Yeah. So that's a good point, Felipe. And I remember in our conversations around that, uh, just to share with everyone else, the importance of getting Spanish material and formation uh, processes put in place that is in Spanish and that is not just translation from English to Spanish because there are nuances that get missed. Um, so that was a conversation at our last ordination team where Sandra talked about taking at least the pathways, at least the 36 competencies uh -huh. that are there and begin to translate those into Spanish so that we can get Spanish speaking uh, leaders ordained using the competencies. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and then if we get if we have to get to the 144, we may have to pay some money, right? To do because that's a lot to do to translate. Um, but so that's kind of the idea there is that um, we do recognize we may have to do some translating work. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, then Spanish and Spanish is too many. It's got in many books, many material for leadership, for theology in Spanish. And yep. may, I don't know, maybe in the future, the leaders coming, Spanish fluence, maybe Sandra, my wife, me, maybe teaching the program in Spanish for the yes. is not too expensive payments for for the program, for the, this is the other problem. Sometimes yep. the, the Spanish pastors, is no no got a sufficient finances for paying the expensive expensive uh, programs in the universities. I hear you. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the beautiful things um, about the pathways is there's multiple ways to get there, mm -hmm. and formal education is only one of many, right? So there's some flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank awesome. you. Uh, are we ready to move on to the last team that we want to update? <laughs> Jonathan, that's you, the Covenant Keepers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, really the update from the Covenant Keepers. The Covenant Keepers team is designed to be, I mean, I think if we were to look at it from a classes, RCA classes standpoint, roughly analogous to like a church vitalization, church health kind of thing. Um, but in in the best sense, my my heart for this really has more to do or less to do with running into churches and taking over when there's a problem as to building relationships before there's a problem so that uh, that we're walking alongside of each other and resourcing each other so that you know, let's, you know, your, your pastor, your pastor steps out or whatever else. And there's a team of people who can come along and support the church's process of, of working through that. Or if there's a, a disagreement or whatever, um, that, that, that's really the vision for that. Um, it's not the, we're taking over, we're the experts people, um, that that's never really gone over well, uh, I think in any context, um, and it especially hasn't gone over really well when uh, in, in, in the same vein as the Harvest Network, where a bunch of people from the city come in and try to take over a rural church to tell them how to do what they need to do. Uh, it just never really works out very well for anyone. Um, and the reality of uh, if we if we have the relationships built ahead of time and and, and I mean, but by that, I mean, like you know, pastor to pastor communication, uh, you know, the, the covenant keepers team to elders and consistories or, or whatever, or even like in-person visits where, you know, I, we, we, we are able to, to go and just say hi on a Sunday or something like that. Um, and I, and I mean that truly with all my heart, even in upstate New York, even in Kentucky, you know, even wherever, wherever God grows this network that we're able to, uh, to make those visits so that uh, there's a, there's a face and a name uh, with the network instead of just this sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, we're part of this thing and they don't really care about us unless we have a problem and then they try to fix us kind of a thing. Like we want it to be truly relational. And, and so that means we're going to have to actually 
think through how we can truly be relational even across uh bigger distances you know it's there's a bunch of west michigan churches here and we recognize that we're talking with churches in northern michigan that are a couple hours away you know uh, you know, Warren and, and Catherine, you guys are in upstate New York. Jake, you're representing churches down in, in Kentucky. Like, okay, so this is an obstacle, uh, but it's not one that we can't overcome. Um, and it's not one that we can't overcome by through travel, through technology, through through whatever we need to do. So um, that's my heart for it. Uh, we're in the beginning processes of, of trying to figure out what this is actually going to look like. And uh, Mike Pitsenberger is is on board with this too he wants to be a part of this and uh, Todd and Carrie together too the the four of us um we're gonna start working on uh soon laying the groundwork for what this is gonna look like and then uh yeah and try to figure that all out so um the goal in the alliance uh the alliance global has a covenant keepers team um and then each network is going to have at least one if not multiple the dakota network is going to have like five because of their massive spread of uh like geography um, and churches so um but we want to uh we want to you know it's not it, accountability is a good thing it's a positive word um it is it's a good thing for us as um as as pastors it's a good thing for us as consistories and churches and uh and it's a way that we can uh, spur one another on towards love and good deeds um rather than you know lord it over each other or you know something like that that's that's kind of my heart for it um but as far as an actual update of what we're doing uh we've talked about it <laughs> so yeah you're working on your first meeting right you've yeah. got it you're about ready to meet so that's wow. good we're about there yep <laughs> awesome all right uh so circle back mike um campus ministry oh you're muted drew mike drew yeah get a mute there we go unmuted um if if uh if you've been in the in the Zealand classes, you're familiar with the campus ministry up at Grand Valley State University and um, how the classes um, was uh, managed over them for quite a while. Then they grew to the point where they are bigger than the classes. We released them, but continue to support them. And um, I'm not sure what's happening right now with the support from the Zealand classes and the RCA, but with many of the churches and the larger ones who have left, um, I'm not sure how many of those churches either have continued their support. What I do know is um, several of us, I think, got a notice that they are about $100,000 uh, shy of their, of their budget. Uh, they've already laid off one pastor, and apparently um, their funding, they have to uh, accumulate this uh, by the end of July or so. Um, otherwise, they're going to have to uh, do some radical changes or something with their ministry. So I have been informed about this from a couple of different sources um, and it's near and dear to my heart because my uh, daughter-in-law was saved out of that ministry, uh, met my son and uh, they got married out of that ministry. And so it's, um, it's a place I'd like to see to continue. So, however, we need to um, get the word out or to encourage people to support it, or if we have money in the network that we can do so. Um, I don't know where the line the alliance is with that. Um, just to, I guess, touch base with Ben and see what see what they need and what's going on. And um, I think if we can encourage as a whole, that might be better than individual churches. But yet, we're I've got a deacon in the building right now, a meeting I got to get to. But um, we're going to be talking about what kind of funding we can give and what we've got in our budget already. So. If there's something the network can do, great. If it's got to go up the flagpole further to Tim or whoever, um, let's uh, let's not haste or not let's waste here at any time. Let's let's uh, attend to that need if we possibly can. I don't have a solution. I'm just making an informed plea. sharing the need. Yeah, it is a fantastic ministry. They're five minutes up the road from our church. South Blendon supports them. 
I've got a student who just graduated from Grand Valley who uh, we celebrated his graduation, but he's going back to serve as a leader, non-paid leader. And uh, we take our students up there to give them a vision of what campus ministry could look like when they're going off to college, how they can get plugged in. It's an amazing ministry. So yeah, thank you, Mike, appreciate that. Um, I, did, I wanna be cognizant of our time. We're a little over what I wanted to do um, in terms of time. So just wanna recap a couple things. One is send us nominations for our board. If you got anyone in your church that is full of the spirit, uh, we would uh, love to hear about them and, and see if we can't get them connected to the ARC board. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to mention as recap? Uh, just to also thank you to you all. Thank you for being with us, updating. Love the ideas that are flowing from this. Thank you for the rich conversations. Um, and I'm excited to uh, put a lot of it into into practice. And then third, if you're excited about any of these teams that we're forming, let us know. Let Jonathan know, you know, let myself know or any of the team leaders know um, because, um, you know, as we grow, uh, we're going to need some capacity in order to, uh, to walk alongside as well. Uh, Mike's asking who's heading to Denver? Raise your hand. All right, wonderful, Great. sweet, gonna be a good time. All right, thank you, Jonathan, for putting your email there. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, yep. All right, you said yep. Okay, uh, let's uh, let me close us in prayer and have a blessed day. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the way your Spirit has worked within and with us, confirming some things that we wanted to do reminding us of uh, the values that we have as a network and who we want to be and how we want to support each other and how we want to empower the local mission of each church. Lord, we just pray that your blessings would be on each of us as we go uh, and do whatever God has called us to do, whatever you called us to do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everybody. See ya.